Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Industrial Foregoing, where today we're going to be covering everything crop related and farming inside of this mod. Now I just want to start off by prefacing, I know it's been a while since the previous part, I have an update in the description of where I've been for the last couple of months, but welcome to 2024. Now the first thing we're going to need when it comes to industrial foregoing and farming, we are going to need the plant sower. This is made with some pistons, pitty, pitty machine frame, two plastic, flower pot, iron gears and redstone dust. And this is going to be your first step into making farms. So I've got this one under here. Now the interesting thing to know about the plant sower is that it actually goes underground. Now that is because the plant sower actually works. If I put this here, you can show working area. It plants, this block would be your dirt and this block would be where you actually have your crop. So it plants underground. By default, it will only do one space, but you can give add-ons inside of it. If we see here, we can give it ourselves a big space add-on. So what's the largest we can go? Uh, 12. And as you can see, you can end up with a very, very large farm as you see here. So we are using today just a four star uh, or a plus four add-on as you see here to give ourselves this sort of nice working area. So we can have this split up into quadrants and that is designed by the colors on top of here because inside of here we have ourselves a whitelist. If you're only using one type of crop, you don't have to worry about this. You can fill this entirely up with seeds or potatoes. Don't worry. This side is basically your supply, by the way. Um, but what we have here is of the reason I've made it this nice size is because if you think about this in sort of a three by three block and class that as one chunk of your farm, this now works in a three by three chunk system, if that makes sense. And that is how this whitelisting system works. So we'll have all four corners and the middle turn into wheat and all of the sides turn into potatoes. So if I turn this on, we do have speed upgrades. So this will happen very fast. If I turn this on here, as you can see, it works in sort of roads and it's planting it in all the different sectors. So that's how the whitelist works. Now the colors inside of here determine the colors out here. So the, here we have black. That is going to be this corner. Here we have purple. Uh, which is in this corner so I'm not actually standing in the right rotation really it will be this rotation as you can see so this is the way I planted it so yellow is over there reds over there so make sure you're standing in the right way if you want to actually plant this in the right way just know that something you want to do and make sure is that if you are using multiple uh, inputs make sure you don't have one thing overflow because if you ended up with having this full of potatoes obviously these seeds wouldn't plant so you do have to keep an eye on that or find some way of regulating it uh, at the moment it looks like potatoes are overflowing just a little bit here besides that the only thing you need in here is power now you can also put in your inputs you can pipe them in or conveyor belt them in if you're using purely industrial foregoing so that's how we plant things how do we actually go into picking them up well for that we are going to need the plant gatherer now the plant gatherer is made with some iron axes iron hoe pitiful machine frame two plastic two gold gears and a piece of redstone and this is basically it's going to harvest the area so inside of here we have ourselves our add-ons here it's going to be the exact same size as this one so this is our add-on plus four and all this is going to do is need some power and it will just start harvesting away so we'll turn this on with the redstone here and you can see it started harvesting now this works in lines as well i believe all these machines work from east to west uh, and it could be just the direction I've placed them all down, but it always seems to go from east to west. So if I started getting a load of bone meal here and just started um, getting a load of them ripe, as you can see, they are starting to harvest if I didn't keep over right clicking. But there you go. It's harvesting in rows. Now, when you actually have this harvest, it's going to generate a small amount of fluid. You saw it flicker there ever so slightly. And that is sludge. This I'm just piping out straight into this black hole here where we only have just over a thousand, three thousand in there. Now sludge is something you don't have to really worry about in the long term or the short term really, it, but you can refine this down further into other things. Uh, what you can do though, if you don't want to collect it, you can let this buffer fill up and this will continuously still um, harvest. So don't worry about that. You don't have to pipe it out because as you see over here, uh, this is, oh, it's not completely full, but uh, it's going onto the conveyor belt as you can see here but don't worry this can completely harvest so as you can see we got this here so we will now on this system because we're trying to build this system up we will have this turned on now and as this grows it will actually start planting things or uh, harvesting things now if we go down here i've got this just an extract to drop down here this is going into a conveyor belt that's going straight into our sower as you can see here then any excess is going into drawers for us to eat and then any extra seeds or anything like that that we don't need can just get put into the trash can you could just loop this round endlessly 
uh, but it will probably fill up a bit and then your game might start to lag. So you do want to trash things eventually. Uh, this obviously is not part of industrial foregoing. Now, before moving on on how we actually speed this up, there is one more cool thing the, end, the plant gatherer can do. Now, the plant gatherer, this is going to be a late game thing. Now, I'm telling you this now, it's going to be a late game thing. And that's because we need ether gas to go in this small bit here. Ether gas you get from the wither, which is going to be a lot later. You can auto farm it, but we're not going to be covering that today. So if we put ourselves a little bit of ether gas in here, it will fill up to a thousand buckets. It will turn this plant gatherer into an auto planter as well. So you do have to fill in all the gaps, obviously, yourself. Um, so you probably have the sower, but if you were to do a new farm with ether gas, you will not have to worry about this. And what it will do is now that when you have your crops fully uh, completed, it will harvest them, but it will automatically replant them as well. I am doing a lot of over right clicking here, but as you can see, it's automatically reharvesting them, which is pretty cool. And it's just filling up the internal buffer. You do need to keep this ether gas topped up, but that's not the end of the world. So how about we move on to into actually speeding this up now? And that is with the plant fertilizer. This is made with some leather, some simple machine or one simple machine frame. So we've gone up a tier now in machines, uh, some plastic, some glass bottles, iron, uh, uh, iron gear, sorry, and redstone. Now, this is going to be basically your bone mealer. We have ourselves here an add-on and speed upgrade, which is working in the same area as the rest. And inside of here, we are filling this up with bone meal. Obviously, at the moment, this is all full. But if I was to harvest a load of these, uh, you'll see that this is going to be working in a grid or line system again. And it will start doing ourselves some fertilizing as you can see here now you can use actual fertilizer in this fertilizer is inside of industrial foregoing it's not a it's not better than bone meal but it can be used instead of bone meal if you find an early game uh dungeon skeleton dungeon you won't have to worry about this anyway uh but fertilizer is made with the sewage composter and sewage but sewage is going to be all about relating to animals and animal harvestry and husbandry inside of industrial foregoing so we're not going to be covering that today on how to get the fertilizer but you can use fertilizer in this instead of bone meal so now if you go back over to our original farm we'll turn this bone meal farm on here and there we go we have our fully automated quick system you will probably need a decent amount of power and upgrades but as you can see this does work very very quickly it does take a little bit for everything to tick together you do end up with gaps as you can see but it does work very very fast now before i go on what we can do with all of these items instead of just eating them let's cover the sludge very quickly for this we're going to need the sludge refiner this is made with a pitiful machine frame some furnaces iron gears gold gears plastic and buckets and literally all you need to do is give this a bit of power and sludge and it will turn this into basically a way of getting free blocks as you can see this is the entire loot table here clay gravel dirt soul sand sand and red sand so you could use this as an early game way of getting soul sand instead of going to the nether, but it's completely up to you. Something I quickly forgot to mention just after covering the sludge here is that with the gatherer itself, the gatherer can actually, and the plant sower, can be used on saplings as well. So you can use this whole system for trees also. So what it will happen is that the uh, sower will obviously put the saplings down. And when one grows, the gatherer will te detect the base of a tree because obviously this only works in one plane. Uh, it will detect the base of a tree. It will destroy all the leaves of the tree and then the trunk. So don't worry, it will destroy the whole tree. You won't just get the bottom layer of logs. So this can work. This whole system can work on trees as well. So now that we have all these crops growing and saplings and trees growing, how about we actually turn this into a little bit of a power upgrade? At the moment, we've been using pitiful generators the entire time. So how about we upgrade it? We want to use some passive generation. And for this, we're going to need some biofuel. And we get this in the bioreactor. For this, we're going to need the pitiful machine frame, some slime. You can use pink slime from the mod as well. Uh, diamond gears, sugar, bricks, and some plastic. And all you need for inside of this, you can need a little bit of power, and you're going to need some water. Now, inside of here, we have efficiency. If I take all of these out, as you can see, the efficiency has dropped down. We are using these three types just to start off with, because this is what we've been growing in these farms over here. And this is going to generate biofuel. Uh, it will just do it passively after each craft it will do a certain amount of biofuel but the higher the efficiency the more biofuel you'll get to get the maximum amount of efficiency you need all nine squares filled with different items so as i add in a new natural ingredient we'll get a jump in efficiency as you can see here it's about 11 percent per one but when you get all nine filled you do get 100 percent, not 99 so you will need a lot of crafts uh crops obviously you can do beets in here as well you can do saplings so if you do a sapling one uh, you, I don't think you could put logs in here, uh, but if you put the saplings in here, obviously you can put apples in here as well. So you want all the crops to go in here to get the most amount of biofuel. 
Then with the biofuel, you are going to need to get the biofuel generator made with three pistons, the pitiful machine frame, plastic furnace, two gold gears. This is very simple. All you have to do is just simply pipe in your um, biofuel and it will generate power. Now, luckily, this can has a 1 million FE power buffer, so you can use this as a battery. Um, it, most of the time, if you're not using a mod that has power energy pipes, you're probably going to slap one of these next to your uh, block itself and just use conveyor belts to actually pump in your biofuel or sludge. Because the cool thing is, uh, sorry, not sludge. The cool thing is, is that fluids actually do work on the conveyor belts inside this mod, as you can see here. And these conveyor belts can be used to actually pipe in. You will need the in, uh, extract and the insertion upgrades, but we're going to go over conveyor belts in a different episode. So what we have here, this isn't actually going to be a food gathering um, farm. This is actually going to be a fuel generating farm. So here we have got just ourselves. We've got wheat growing. Um, so here we've just got loads of seeds. No whitelisting required. This is working very fast. Then we have our gatherer. Obviously, if we have ether gas, we don't need the soil. We can purely use the gatherer and then we can put this however many crops we want. We don't have to worry about the whitelisting, which is probably a better option late game. And then we have our fertilizer here with an infinite amount of bone meal. Now, underneath, we have got something a little bit convoluted. Now, the only pipe I'm using is for power because obviously you can't transport power inside of a industrial foregoing, which is annoying. But we have got wheat going into one. Then we've got saplings going down to the other. The saplings are being split in case this gets overloaded to go straight down into our reactor over there. The seeds are going straight into the sower first. All the wheat is going into our reactor and all the overflow seeds, they're going to go into this reactor as well. So this is going to generate our biofuel and then go into all of these different bio generators here. It's a little bit convoluted because there's not an easy way of actually doing fluids. So we're using uh, buffers with the black hole here. But as you can see, I'm actually gaining more buckets of um, biofuel than I am actually using. These are all full and creating a lot of power. I recommend afterwards we can you should just uh, trash everything but you could obviously use a draw system here or a chest system to catch all the extra wheat to use for f uh, food if you so desired now moving on from this automation there are two more ways of automating things and there is one more type of crop you can actually create the first thing is going to be obviously the spore recreator the spore cre recreator is a way of actually generating any uh, type of mushrooms uh, or or duplicating any type of mushrooms inside of the game. This requires some plastic, any two types of mushrooms. They don't have to be vanilla mushrooms. You can use modded uh, pitiful machine frame and some iron gears. Now, what this will do is, as I say, simply duplicate mushrooms. It will turn one mushroom into two. Very simple. It requires some water and power, and that is it. And we have a very simple system here. So the left is on the inputs and the right is your outputs. You can give it upgrades, of course. And I've got a very simple setup here where we have got ourselves an extractor going onto a conveyor belt pointing back in with a bouncing add-on. It's bouncing add-ons hitting this block and then being dropped into our drawer. And then the drawer is resupplying this spore re recreator. Then any extras, if this drawer fills up, it will go into our trash can. Now, the annoying thing about this is that if you do have it very, very slow, you don't have any upgrades, you can use a small amount of both types of mushrooms in here, uh, being um, brown mushrooms, of course. But it will always try and do the top block first. It doesn't round robin into each of these three, which is a little bit annoying. Um, so you're going to have to do a whole second setup if you want to do brown mushrooms. Now, the other cool thing about this spore reactor as well is that you can actually use it on nether warped and warped warp. All you have to do is put lava inside of here as well, I do believe. Now, the last way you can actually do things in here, and that is with the hydroponic bed. Think of this as sort of an electric farmland. This is made with some iron hose, dirt, plastic, gold gears, a simple machine frame, but don't make this for you. This is still a late game block and some fertilizer. So you do have to do some animal stuff in order to get this block of fertilizer to get this hydroponic bed. Now, the hydroponic bed, as I say, is sort of like an electric farmland. So in here, all we need is some power. We need some water. You can use this for nether crops as well. So you can actually give this lava, I do believe. There you go. Or lava for nether crops, which is pretty cool. And all you have to do, if we just destroy this first, what you have to do is simply shift left clip on the top with what you want to harvest. And then it will give it a couple of ticks. And this will actually sort of give a natural bone meal effect. Using power, this is going to speed up the growth of your crops. It takes a bit to warm up. Um, but then it does go pretty quickly as you see here if you have the mod installed which most packs do where you can just simply right click obviously it will just obviously replant now you can use this early game maybe go afk and have a right clicker on um, to have this auto work or if you have site click you can probably use a right clicker on this to get this early game but if you don't have something like that then there is an upgrade to this hydroponic bed and this is again using ether gas 
So if we get ourselves a way of putting ether gas inside of here, I'll use this tank from uh, Mechanism. If we put this ether gas in here, you don't need a lot. It's literally only 10 milligrams. This will actually speed up the growth, but also harvest and replant it, which is absolutely lovely. So you can leave this alone and it turns this more into a garden cloche like you would have in um, immersive engineering. So that way, this completely supersedes everything we've already done because you can just have plenty of these in a row with all your different types of uh, crops that you want to do, which is pretty cool. Uh, you do have to keep the ether supply up. I think you get about five or so crafts or processes before one miller bucket goes down. So you don't need a lot of ether gas. Uh, but it is something you do have to realize and remember. But for now, guys, that is going to be everything when it comes to all the crops and farming you can do inside of industrial foregoing. This was a fun one. If this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live. Next time, we're going to be covering everything when it comes to animals and husbandry. We're going to figure out how we actually get this sewage and turn it into fertilizer. But until next time, guys, Take care.